Well, of course, the running game by the Pittsburgh Steelers, the offensive line, but it's been really interesting to see how the Seahawks have been responding, and it's really been DK Metcalf making the big play with Geno Smith. He's going up against the quarter. Quick visit to the medical tent. Geno Smith, 9 of 13. Walker with a touchdown. Metcalf with that big 33-yard reception. It's been a nice balance that they've had. And talked about Geno Smith a little bit. He's been very mobile in the pocket, extending the plays, finding the right guy. So as long as they can continue to combat this rushing attack from the Pittsburgh Steelers, they're going to continue to be in it, and then they're going to have to find a way to get a stop in the fourth quarter if they want to get the victory. Third quarter underway. On the run, it's DJ Dallas. Across the 30. Take it down to the 35. We check in with Shannon. Hey, Kenny, so remember this week, Mike Tomlin told us it was all going to start with that offensive line. I kind of joked with him at halftime. I said, so how do you think they did? He looked at me, he goes, how do you think they did? I said 145 yards of rushing, I think pretty good. He said, we've preached all week long. We have to control the line of scrimmage. That's how we're going to control this environment. Remember, a lot of these Steeler players have never played here. As far as Pete Carroll, it was pretty simple. The message was all about tackling. I'm sure that doesn't surprise you, Bill. He said, we just got to tackle up front everywhere, but we got to keep our offense out there and give them a chance. Thanks, Shannon. Joey Porter Jr. back on the field for the Steelers. From the 35, fake to Walker. Smith under pressure, able to get rid of it. Take it out to the 39-yard line by Jake Bobo, his first reception today. In comes Tyler Lockett and Noah Fant. Noah Fant had a very nice first half. But you look at the injury update, Abraham Lucas, their right tackle, he is out with the knee. You have Stone Forsyth, number 78. He's going to be in the game for the Seahawks at the right tackle. On second down, Smith complete. First down for the tight end, Colby Parkinson in Steelers territory. 20-yard connection. Geno Smith has been doing a phenomenal job maneuvering in the pocket. You're going to see the pressure coming from the left side, and he's still able to buy time. That's all he's looking to do, buy a little more time so that he can finally get the ball out to the guy breaking on his route. Kobe Parkinson does a good job whipping his head around very quickly because there was a lot of pressure on Geno Smith. Three tight end set from the Steelers, 41. And off Walker, bit of a stutter step. Second down and nine as we check out Geno Smith under pressure this season. That's why I said that he's so composed in the pocket, he has complete control of the offense because he sees the blitz coming, he sees the pressures coming. Still able to find the right guy. He knows the hot reads, etc. Evan Brown is going to be down. That's the center for the Seattle Seahawks. So you're seeing Geno Smith start to warm up with the backup. And we'll be back. They're definitely going to check up on him. But Miles Jack, he, he laid a shot on him. Olu, Olu Timmy, rookie out of Michigan, won the Remington at Outland trophies last season. In for Evan Brown at center for the Seahawks. Second and nine. Pass is caught by Noah Fant. And Fant picks up the Seahawks first down to the Pittsburgh 30. His fourth catch today, gain of nine. And now you see the play calling changes a little bit. Shane Waldron smartly has these quick routes. So you have two backup offensive linemen in the game going against one of the best, if not the best, defensive ends in the game, T.J. Watt. So instead of sitting there and having Geno Smith sit there and try to read and read, get some quick bars out there for him. New center, new right tackle. First and 10 for the Steelers, 30. Here's Walker, big hole, inside the 20. First down and more. Walker's still going, there's a flag as Walker is finally taken down at the six yard line, but 
This one's coming back. It's a hold. It's going to be on DK Metcalf. Holding offense number 14 to 10 yard penalty. Replay first down. I was watching this matchup the whole time, and he's just being aggressive, right? He's been doing that. And then the moment Joey Porter acted like he wanted to go tackle, that's when you get the holding call. Joey Porter wanted nothing to do with that tackle on Kenneth Walker, but it was good acting by him, make it look like I'm trying to get off the block. You get the holding call. Ball spotted back at the 33-yard line. Yeah, I can see Metcalf's frustration. Joey Porter wanted nothing to do with that run play. First down at 13. Smith swings it out. Here's Walker. And Walker gains four. Down to the Pittsburgh 29. Opening possession, third quarter with the Seahawks trailing by three. Seattle can clinch a playoff spot with two wins. They cannot be eliminated with a loss today. But it'll be very difficult to make the playoffs if they lose today and then they go and play next week. Smith throws. Passes caught by Metcalf, wrapped up at the 25-yard line. And for the Steelers, they stay alive with a win. They would be eliminated with a loss today and a Chargers win. Chargers currently trailing Denver 13-3. So that's good news for Mike Tomlin's club. I know he's not looking at the scoreboard. He's not caring about that. Pete Carroll, the same thing. They are so locked in. And we interviewed both of them. Locked into today, getting their team focused and fired up to win. They're down at four. Smith to the outside, incomplete. Lockett, unable to gather it in. Seahawks sent out the field goal unit. And now there's Evan Brown, Seattle center, back behind the medical tent. Yeah, what you don't see is him with the helmet. So that's not looking good for the Seahawks offense. Gingerly walking, looks like he's going to walk back into the locker room. He's heading that way. Yeah. Jason Myers, 43-yard attempt. From the right hash. Myers ties the game at seven. Uh, Pass the secondary a couple times. And then Kenneth Walker is more of a balance. This will be taken out. Midway Buke, former Seahawk. 2006, and the, the best thing is the message came loud and clear from offensive coordinator to play caller to head coach. They all said the same thing about the offensive line. We need them to play well today. We need them to step up, and so far they have. Warren and Harris with first half touchdowns. Movement, flags. Ball start, offense number 83, five yard penalty, it's first down. The tight end Hayward. With that, you get both tight ends going out of the game and you'll have, uh, oh no, Connor Hayward's gonna go back into the game. You'll have the wide receivers. Looks like they'll go what's called 11 personnel, three wide receivers, one tight end. And Najee Harris at the running back position. Nope, excuse me, they got two tight ends, which would be 12 personnel. They're confusing the defense and our linebacker They're in the broadcast me. booth. Yeah, it's tough, man. First down at 15, and there's one of the tight ends. Fryer move. And we talked about this before, so when you're playing for the Jets and the Saints, 
looking at the offense from the other side one yes. of the first things you're doing between plays is checking out the personnel right I always checked out the personnel because then it through a play I immediately look for the personnel and then the down and distance then I remember the offensive coordinator they had tendencies given that personnel and down and distance so I knew what kind of defense I need to get in Second down and one, here's Harris. And he picks up a Steelers first down. Now to the 42, gain of four. And I talk about that because you have a Bobby Wagner, Seattle Seahawks, great linebacker, future Hall of Famer. I know he thinks the exact same way. He looks over, what's the personnel, what's the down and distance, where are we on the field, and that's going to tell me what I'm likely going to get from the offense. Now, the difference is, they just been running it down the throat, so they have to figure out how to stop that first. Once they stop that, then you can get back to the I tendencies. Like 54, 54. Yeah. There, Rudolph identifying 54, Bobby Wagner. That's right. On the toss, it's Harris. Close to midfield. Three star on Hong's way. It's that Mason connects on those big play opportunities. Second down and three, the handoff, it's Warren. Warren with a stiff arm. Two stiff arms. Into Seahawks territory for a Steelers first down. He managed to break the tackle, the arm tackle of Jaron Reed. This is a big stiff arm on a defensive tackle. Then he goes on Boye Mafe and says, get out the club, get off me. I don't care, I'm getting this first down. And that's a mentality. It goes back to, again, you call the defense, it's fine. Boy, Mafe is there to stop him for no gain. Instead, Jalen Warren wants it more, pushes him out of the way and gets a first down. Play clock down to two. On first down, Rudolph with time, throws wide open, down the sideline, inside the 10, and finally tackled at the five is Deontay Johnson. 42 yards on the catch and run. And this is what happens when everyone gets nosy looking at the run. Great play action. Great call by Mike Sullivan. Mason Rudolph, we just said, he connects on those big play opportunities. That's one right there that you need. You get it all the way down into now goal line territory so you get another opportunity to score. Great play call. Great execution by the Steelers. Rudolph, eight for his last eight. Three tight end set. First and goal. Here's Harris. Harris. Oh, my push. goodness. Harris crosses the goal line. He's in for a Steelers touchdown, his second today. Can he watch where Najee Harris was quote unquote stopped. He runs right into the pile. That's where he's supposed to be stopped. And then look at the size, the power of him, Friar Move, Darnell Washington. They're all pushing him right into the end zone for a touchdown. Wow, they did that against Bobby Wagner. You do not see that happen often. I'm talking first ballot Hall of Fame linebacker Bobby Wagner. That doesn't happen often. So that is a great job by the Steelers. Extra point from Boswell is good. Exactly what to do with the football once he got it. This is what I love. I always love the running backs. The first guys they go to think offensive line because they understand they could not get it done without them. And take a look. Pete Carroll is telling them there's nothing left in the in the playbook all right it's week 17 we cannot design anything else you just gotta want it there's dj dallas out across the 30 35 setting up excellent field position for the seattle offense 32 yards on the return we mentioned earlier seattle losing Abraham Lucas, the right tackle, and now Evan Brown, the center, has been ruled out with a concussion. And you'll notice I, I referenced it on the last series. 
the pass plays were a little different. They were a little quicker. I still want to see them get after the Pittsburgh defense by like running the football and then help out Geno Smith with the quicker passing routes. So Olawa Tibby remains in at center. Four side but right tackle. Not much. Kenneth Walker. Gains a yard as we check in with Shannon. Yeah, during that last defensive series for the Seahawks, Kenneth Walker was over here on the sideline. They actually had him laying down on the bench at one point, kind of working out that shoulder you see right there, then working on it, stretching it out. Guys, he did miss practice this week with that injury, so that's something we definitely want to keep our eyes on. Thanks, Shannon. He remains in the game, 53 yards on the ground. Averaging six yards per carry. Right. You know, Smith checking out of it. It was going to be a quick passing play. Looks like a direct snap to Walker as Smith stepped out of the way and it did not fool the Steelers' defense. Yeah, it was poor execution. And remember, you have the backup center in the game, Oluwatimi, and they were trying to do a direct snap to Kenneth Walker. Kind of missed it. Kenneth Walker bobbles it, and that becomes just a horrible play for the Seahawks, unfortunately. I like what they were trying to do, but the execution wasn't good. And then this is where you don't want to be with T.J. Watt and Alex Highsmith, third and long. It's going to take a while for the routes to develop, or you just try to throw quick and hope that your player can make a play. They do a good job on Watt, third down and 17. But it will not be enough as Fant is taken down at the 42. And very aware of T.J. Watt. Zach Charbonnet makes sure to chip. Foresight doesn't overset, which is a good job by him. And it's as I said, they, Geno Smith throws it quickly, doesn't want to make a bad play worse. And unfortunately, Noel Fant can't break the tackle of Miles Jack. Brings up a fourth down. So Dixon waiting inside is 30. And over end, taken by Austin at the 15. Six yards on the return. He's going into the locker room. They were working on that shoulder. Hopefully he's going to get back into the game. Hopefully he'll be okay, but they're going to need him down the stretch. Jason Rudolph and the Steelers go to work. And you, you now notice, Kenny, the safety is in the box. They went three coverage. They're trying to do everything they can to stop the run. From the 21-yard line on first down, it's Warren. Gain of two with just over four minutes remaining, third quarter. The Steelers, who have not punted in this game, leading the Seahawks by seven. 167 rush yards for the Steelers. I just circled Julian Love coming down in the box. And now you're going to see him back up over here. They're playing this cat and mouse game. They don't want to give up the big pass play again. Pass is caught and taken for first down yardage by Warren. Now to the 32 yard line. So Rudolph has now completed his last nine pass attempts. Yeah, this is very, very challenging. I've been in these situations where you can't stop the run. Now you're trying to bring a safety in and you play this cat and mouse game between the coordinators. The coordinators understand if I'm going to br bring that safety back, I got something underneath, which they just completed. And as soon as you try to bring a safety up, I'm going to go over the top. This is this is tough sledding right now for Clinton Hurt calling the defense. From the 33 on first down, it's Warren. Did it just one. Devin Bush made the tackle. What a day, what an atmosphere here in Seattle. I'm more impressed with all the terrible towers that I see. I look across the field in the stands, and they are having a day. Second down and nine, as Warren will be tackled for a loss by Witherspoon. 
There you go. That that's the way to be aggressive. Witherspoon is going to come on a, a nickel blitz, and he's coming all the way from this side, and he's going to track down Jalen Warren. There is no way Jalen Warren was getting out of that tackle. Slams him down. The frustration, the aggression, that's the way you step up as a defender. Get this defense excited. Third down at 14. Rudolph fires. Well, that was incomplete. It was short, but it looked like the ball hit the ground. And it's rolled to completion, three yards shy of the marker. Yeah. Now right, let's take a look. Trey Brown and that ball. Pickens pinning it between oh, his legs. Very nice, very nice. All right, George Pickens, I stand corrected. Still showing us why you're a great athlete. Love it. Nice catch. But not enough. Thanks in large part to that play by Witherspoon. Their catch just inside the 15. Seahawks take over. Now this from State Farm. Over the first three quarters, last two weeks, and today. Charbonnet in the backfield. Another fumble. Ball came loose. My goodness. Oh, no, it's going to be incomplete. It was a forward pass. It was a forward pass, Kenny. Yep, rolled an incomplete pass. Yeah. It's incomplete. It's second down. Incomplete pass. Please reset the game clock to 109. Thank you. You know, Smith, he's going to get the ball. And that's all you need. That little bit makes it a forward pass. Tried to get it into the hands of Smith and Jacob. And I was going to talk about the emphasis Shane Waldron, Geno Smith putting on starting fast. They did that. All of a sudden, you're starting to unravel with these tight, these little gimmicky plays. There you go. There's a first down and more. All the way out to the 46-yard line. It's Metcalf. This is all created because you get time from the offensive line. Foresight by himself against TJ, handles his business. Geno Smith steps up in the pocket, throws an absolute beauty to DK Metcalf. And you don't see Joy Porter in the screen because he blew right by him for that completion. 32 yards. Now Charbonnet split out wide to the right, bottom of your screen. Smith rolling right. He will take off across midfield. Oh. First down. Smith. Takes it inside the 30, out of bounds at the Steelers' 29-yard line. 25-yard scamper. Nice job. Now, TJ, this time, he's going to go up, and he's going to go under. Gino reads that quickly and makes the right decision to go. And you can see his eyes downfield, nothing there. He's still got some wheels on him. Look at him go. Nice job. Gino Smith making something out of nothing. That's his longest run of the season.